Hey, you're not Jimmy. Wanna be a millionaire? Death is your final answer. You'll vomit with excitement. You'll puke with pleasure. You'll shit with fear. Spluttered brains. Infected flesh. Get excited. Get disgusted. Get pissed off. Every door leads to terror. You will see dead people. They'll see you. Maximum pulse. Maximum bleeding. Maximum strain. You will go through a live inferno. But there are only two options. House of Horror. Ill bleed. How we doing, guys? It's finally time. We're finally doing it. It's ill bleed. How are we doing? Cheers for the sub, Sean. Cheers for the bits crash. I wanted to hype it a little bit by putting the trailer on before we actually started the stream. I hope that I hope it helped because that trailer is absolute trash. Speaking of absolute trash, my chat box. Hello, why are you over there? Jason! <laughs> at me, at Jason. Where is Chip? Oh, there you are. No, 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 you stay right here. Mikey is fucking buzzing for this. Right, well, we start. Um, we're, we're, you never got the shot. The shot's rare, that's true. You usually get it right enough. Right, this starts with a cutscene with no subtitles, so I'm gonna shut the fuck up for a bit. Well, uh, we get the story. What the fuck is a speech competition, but what the fuck does that mean? For as long as I can remember, my family ran what we called a horror caravan. We hauled this house of horrors around from town to town, trying to give people a new thrill. A new nightmare. I kind of like traveling, but all that gruesome gore got to me after a while. This is the plot. My dad was always conjuring up new devices, tricks, and traps, each one scarier than the last. <laughs> Guess who he tried them out on? Yep, me. I guess that might be a little. I mean, you have to be brave to walk through a den of snakes or try to avoid trap doors to make it to your room. I was a pretty fearless kid by the time I was five, thanks to my fearsome father. He fed on others' fears and was never satisfied. They want our my mom couldn't they want stand how obsessed he'd gotten, so she thankfully divorced him when I was six. Yet I had gotten attached to horror. I remember how that good old Halloween pillow and a hot red water bath soothed me. I think I might major in child psychology. By the way, Sean, see the person who plays her? That's Bubsy from Bubsy 3D. Same actress. So, how'd I do? 
That was great! I mean, you're the head of the Horror Research Club and... President of the Student Council! The guy in the left is voiced by Sonic, by the you way. You win this speech contest for sure! Well, back in the Sonic Adventure days, anyway. And also Brock from Pokemon made it! What, Michelle? Why didn't you listen to Erico's speech? I don't need to. I know she'll win. Here, take a look at this. Those are guest invitations to Ilbly. How'd you get them? From a Pepco promotion. Cool. Yeah. Look, we can win a hundred million bucks there. Yeah, if we can manage to get through the whole park, that is. No sweat. I'm game if you are. Sure thing. I'm with ya. Woo! Woo! <coughs> what about you, Erico? Forgot about that. I think I'll pass. It sounds too good to be true. Why? You just said in your speech to conquer your fear and surpass the odds. Come on, we can test your theory. Sounds like we're trying to be superheroes or something. It's no biggie. It's just a house of horrors. Probably full of cheesy props and gags. Which proves what's so weird about this. How can a funky place like that afford a hundred million dollar reward? Who knows? Maybe they'll make it take so long to get through it. Everyone will give up, go home, and the horror honchos will end up with a lot of free publicity. Or else the whole thing is a hoax. And they don't have the money at all. I agree with him. I'm down with that. I'm not voting. Or going. For real? Are you positive? You sure? Yep. You Every time me. Randy speaks, I love it. Okay, your highness. Then we three humble slaves shall bring back the 100 million dollars and you'll be sorry. I can't wait to commune with the undead. I came looking for booty. I used the <laughs> money for a chainsaw and hacked my way into fame and fear. <laughs> really oh, good timing, brother. Sean. Well done. Okay, then. We'll catch you later, Erico. Let's go! That was, that was amazing, Sean, I gotta say. I fucking, I fucking love Randy, whenever he speaks. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a chainsaw with my money. Whoa, whoa, whoosh up! I know, that was, that was brilliant. I should clarify, I skipped these cutscenes when I was doing my playthroughs of this recently. So uh, it's been a while since I've seen these cutscenes. So here we are, we're at the park, it's been a few days later, our pals have to come back. Excuse me, did you see three high school kids around here three days ago? They had special invites. <coughs> what? <laughs> so the thing about this game as well, because you're mentioning subtitles crash, the Japanese one has subtitles because it's obviously in English. Hey! Cheers for the sub! It's been a year! Fuck! <laughs> Took what? a year for this shite. When Jesus. Did the fucking year back? I know it did take a year for this. It's ridiculous actually, it's weird. Although I think it's technically 11 months, just the way that these things work out, because I got affiliate in September last year. Anyway, this is Elbleed. We're, we're in the park. It's fucking deed. Nay cunts here. So that guy told us to go up the left. The, the left basically has the ER. The music music. <laughs> Some of the sound effects in the music don't work right because it's an emulated, um, it's on an emulator, so it doesn't sound as crisp as it should, but we'll, we'll deal with that. So in the emergency operation, we can get operations, but we won't be doing that for a wee while, so we'll patch it to now. Over here is the cemetery, which is actually just a tutorial. I just realised, I think this music's from, like, the last level. Fuck me, man. Uh, we're gonna skip the tutorial though, because I'm gonna explain everything, so it's all good. My first thing goes, she's got the COVID. Um, something somebody said I was gonna go back on. 
Hi. So you might have noticed from the trailer that we saw at the start of the stream that there's a lot of things wrong. First of all, it said that this character here was Michelle. That's not Michelle. Her name is Eriko. Uh, and it also said, Duke Nukem said, do you want to win a million dollars? That's incorrect. Um, because apparently the prize is a hundred million dollars. Because everybody kept saying it in that cutscene. So already the trailer is fucking wrong as shit. Uh, we have B. Bloody Mary's drugstore. That's the shop. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna buy some stuff. With our um, three grand that we have. Everything is so fucking expensive in the park. It's a lot like an actual theme park. Michelle's your dyslexic name. Um, I'm gonna buy probably just one of them. A couple of these and oh I can't I can't afford any more bandages. Fuck me on. What <laughs> right, hold on. I need to I should actually explain. So this is there's like four different ways you could die, or three different ways you can die, and four sort of it's weird to explain. Basically, this is your health. These heal you. These blue things will cure adrenaline, which is something we'll get into later. These three here are for heart rate, including this guy, who is literally just a deep breath. You have to pay to remind Eriko to breathe. Uh, there's a porno mag. <laughs> for a Listen, times are rough here, Chron uh, Chronicle. Welcome in. And um, we also can bleed to death. So we have bandages, gauze wrap, and uh, coagulant. Coagulant? Also, that the... the, the uh, we can buy nitroglycerin to completely relax our heart. But uh, anyway, this is this is B Bloody Mary. She's um, she's kind of like a character that we're going to see much later in the game. Terrifying. Uh, what else are we selling over here? So we have we've got some hasse, and we've got some protein and what's that? Power. He's the man whose name you'd love to touch, but you mustn't touch. There you go. We got some max power. We can't buy any max power though. Not on sale to us, unfortunately. Uh, up here is the visitor bank. So obviously we're going to save our friends, and if we don't manage to save our friends, they die. And we can spend money to bring them back to life in here. But obviously there's no need to do that right now. And then there's Dummy Man's Photo Studio. This is how we'll save the game. And what I'm going to do is just save the game right now. We're going to go say hi to Dummy Man, who is a, a beat-up crash test dummy. Don't ask me why. The music in this game is fucking weird, Sean. I gotta tell you. Uh, I'm just gonna save over this. There we go. Right, we're gonna go and see how this game actually deals with levels. <laughs> all music, well, not all the music, most of it. So, this is the cinema zone. We have six different cinemas. Only one is open currently. If we go up here, we'll see four more. But they're all shut because we need to beat each level in order for the next one to open. Pretty easy stuff. The first one is the home run of death, which has a man who's not really looking at his son, but the son's looking at him. There's a silhouette of um, a boy with a bat and a duck, maybe? Some blood, and it says, Jimmy, my son. Uh, Horror Surround System, the Minnesota Hell Cinema. Surprised there's not a cast list. There's usually a cast list on these, but I guess there's just no in this one. Very Harvester. It's a bit Harvester, you're right. Jimmy, my son, please, Jimmy. <laughs> right, we're gonna get a cutscene that's gonna uh, explain the plot of the Home Run of Death. A sport, a game, 
knowing full well that you're going to either win or lose. You never expect to die before your dreams come true. Neither did Jimmy or his father, Gail Banbalo, a Minnesota innkeeper. What name? He set up a secret baseball practice arena in the basement of his inn, where he and his son practiced day after day. Jimmy's hard work and batting skills finally led his team to a state victory. It started out a crisp spring day, but before Jimmy could go outside to play, he and his dad went downstairs to bat the ball around a few times. Upstairs, some teenagers had been playing with fire, turning the inn into a raging blaze that was soon out of control. The inn was a total loss, and so was Jimmy, burned in minutes. Mr. Banbala was so badly maimed, he turned into a hideous monster, oozing and bleeding, snarling and growling like a beast, enraged and bent on revenge. He tracked down the kids responsible for the fire and killed them one by one with a blowtorch. That wasn't enough for Banbalo. He won't leave his inn or his memories, so there he waits in ambush. I love that big fucking painting or sculpture of his big fucking face. It's so weird. <laughs> Right. The home run of death is possibly the most normal level out of them all. It's sort of setting you up for the rest of the game. Two of the challengers. Your mission is to calm the, the anger of Banbalo, which by the way was spelt differently in that message in the, in the cutscene. His only weakness is Jimmy. Though he is mad, he quickly drops his guard when he thinks of Jimmy. Memories of Jimmy is the key to the mission. So, stage requirements. If we pass all these requirements, we'll get 50 grand. If we don't, we'll maybe take, we'll maybe take like a grand or something off the total you get at the end of the level. It doesn't really matter. So we've got a clear time of 50 minutes or under. We have to clear over 25 traps, which we'll get into. But we won't clear 25 because of the way I'm going to be playing this. You need your heart rate to be under 120 beats per minute. You need to be over 150 hit points, have at least 200 adrenaline, and you have to be minimally bleeding. I throw a corpse of Jimmy, it's burned. Can't do that. But we are gonna we are gonna get some stuff of Jimmy's. So obviously we've only got Eriko, who by the way is the best character in the game. No one else is no one else compares. Uh -huh. We're gonna use all the characters, but anyway. So this is the start of the level. This bit at the top here, your sense gauge, basically you need to treat it as what can Eriko see or hear or smell that's gonna fucking kill her. The first one we can't avoid is uh, it's right here at the entrance. All that does is put her heart rate up by five, despite it causing, you know, bleeding everywhere. So, the gimmick of this is there's a whole bunch of traps like that in the level. We need to turn this down, I think. Um, what I'm going to do is just skip over here. In every single level, there's an item called the Horror Monitor, and it makes all of the fucking gauges at the top go nuts. Yet, believe it or not, Chronicle, you're actually a lot closer than you think. So, what the, the aim of this game is to get through the levels clearing as many traps as you can. So what the horror monitor does is when you go into first person mode, it'll do this big scope thing and it'll lock on to potential traps. Eriko, Perico, <laughs> fuck off. So Eriko can see that something's amiss and it, if I point this over here, I can then press A to mark it. And then what will happen is once I walk over to that, it's going to trigger, but because I've marked it, we're not going to get hurt by it. If I hadn't marked that, we'd fall in. Cool. But we're probably not going to use the horror monitor until like, like we're probably going to die in this level is what I'm saying, and then we'll use it. But I'm going to walk into every trap ever, just so that you can see the traps. Like, for example, see this bloody window that Eriko can apparently smell? We're going to walk right in there, and we're going to get hit by it. So that caused us to bleed, and also lose hit points for some reason. Don't ask me why. 
Um, if we stand still, the bleeding meter will go down. If we walk, it will go down, but slower. Um, and if it reaches a certain point and we start running, then she'll just like progressively bleed more and more until she dies. So if we run out of health, we'll die. If we bleed too much, we'll die. And if our heart rate gets too low or too high, we will die. But fucking check this place, man. It doesn't look like a fire hit it. Sure, if you get hit by blood, you should gain health. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not right to to drink other people's blood or just like fucking absorb it. So, when sixth sense goes off, that typically means that there's either an item or a monster fight because you do fight monsters in this. There's no enemies kicking about the overworld, as it were. But what she can hear for some reason is uh, is this phone that's sitting right here. But she gets a wee frightened. Fair enough. Newspaper clipping one. Let's have a read. Youngsters, come join us. Chateau Bambolo opens today. Youth Hostel Chateau Bambolo open today. That's what they just said. A place where the young can gather. Owner, Mr. Bambolo, says with enthusiasm, I want the chateau to be a utopia for teenagers. The hostel, an excellent leisure facility, surrounded by nature as an excellent leisure facility. I don't see a problem. Do you see a problem? Bambolo's defo a beast. I'm not gonna say not. It's not um not part of the plot, but so the traps we've seen so far are definite traps. They always happen. Jesus, this still feels like it's really loud for you guys. That may be wrong. This game is comprised of lots of hallways with traps that trigger randomly. It's gonna be quite obvious that they're all like that now, but in later levels it'll be easier to see what will trigger and what won't. So for example, Eriko can smell something about that door. So when we walk up to that door, it's gonna hurt us. <laughs> We're basically, what you should be doing is stopping and checking out the, the horror monitor at the top and marking all the traps, but I'm not fucking doing that. Eriko is fucking dying. It's always fun if you don't see all the stuff that um, that happens when you don't play right. Eriko doesn't give a fuck. So Eriko's plot line, basically... Hold on, we're about to get another trap. Eriko's plot line is that um, she was raised in a horror caravan that her dad ran where he would like, they would travel and scare the shit out of people and he would always use her to test how scary the traps were so she doesn't give a fuck about any of it really Calculator <laughs> um, We just picked up a calculator what that does is that will tell us how likely we are to faint or die from a heart attack from the next shock or the next trap so currently it's at zero. That number will rise. Don't ask me how Eriko was meant to know a hand was coming out of that, but she does. So we're fucking hurting. We're probably gonna die, but I'm trying to like, thing it as much as I can. You just do not get a lot of money at the start. So the game's not really built for you to run into everything at the start of the game. Some of the traps have alternate animations if you mark them. That one has one where he just sort of starts and then he just like, fuck it, whatever. He just stops and Eriko's like, alright, that's fine. Just to get a fight that it moved or anything anymore, she's just like, okay, well, that's alright.
Yes, boys. We're about to get the cutscene crash. I don't know if you're still here. I don't know if you've dipped. But you're about to get the... I think it's 35. Yeah, the 35 bits for free. So we're about to get our first weapon of the game. Which is a baseball bat. A baseball bat that belonged to Jimmy. Before he, uh, you know, burned up. There we go. The home run bat. Amazing Sean. If only the timing was perfect. Gotta go over to this tree because behind it is an iron heart. I, it's fine Sean, honestly I thought that was fucking funny. To be honest. Right, uh, there's not really anything else to do here except pick up the bat and the, um, the iron heart. Um, if we go over here, there's a save point, which we're going to use, and some lockers where we can pick up some nitroglycerin, as you do, and a steak dinner. Honestly, that's actually really handy. That's really good to have. <laughs> that was that was good. I hope I hope Sean's clipping that, <laughs> or someone is, because that was fun. Right, let's move on. A lot of this level is just kind of walking in and tra like clearing all the traps and that, but we will get to some weird shit soon. Hold on, we might be getting any weird shit already. Not any traps here, right? Okay, six cents. So I'm gonna mark the door. It's either gonna be an item or a fight, and it's a fight against a fucking running dummy man. It's not proper dummy man. It's a it's a weird running one. So, a few things to address. You may have noticed the helipad in the middle of the fucking floor. Do you know what that's for? That's for getting out of the battle. There's a helicopter above us that's got a ladder out. And if we want to escape, we have to mash the fuck out of the B button so that they can lower the ladder so that we can escape. I'll show you. See the ladder? You see it? That's how you escape battles in this game. A helicopter rescues you out. Just gotta beat the shit out of this guy though. Uh, another thing about fighting is um, you cannot heal. The pause menu is different. Oh yeah, the, the fucking the dummies are wild by the way. Like when I press start, when I'm not in a fight, I end up in this screen so I can get to my items and I can heal and I can sort myself out. You cannot do that in a fight. So if you're in a fight and it's going badly, you're fucking dying. Like you're not getting out of that. Uh, there's an item nearby because of the sixth sense. It's an ampoule which will help us with adrenaline. So the, the horror monitor, if we were actually using it, drains adrenaline. It drains like 40 every time. And then you put it on, it drains 10. So I'll mark that. And it'll bring the adrenaline down. I don't really know if that's going to be a thing I should have marked. That's a fight. That's fine then. So now we're fighting two of the dummy men. Who, by the way, will 100% attack each other by, by accident. And in fact, it's a, it's a tactic to get them to hit each other. It's really dumb. I should also mention, if you use adrenaline and you successfully mark a trap and then walk in here, it will give you adrenaline back and it does the exact same thing for fights. See that right here's the thing as well Crash, I'm so, I'm really accustomed to the Japanese version where it's not a steak dinner you get. Can I find this? Uh, fuck it. It's like a, it, 
the icon for it in the Japanese version is it's like a platter of food sitting in front of a granny. It's so fucking weird, I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, we could potentially yeah, sit in front of a granny. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole, it's like a whole bunch of food in front of a granny. It's so weird. Um, there's loads of weird traps in this one. We've just like sunk into the blood. I think was the implication there. It's a big, big chicken with teeth. I've got to go over here because there's items over here to pick up. Like another steak dinner. Lovely. And there's a can of... Oh no, that's a salad. That's not a can of anything. There should be a can of hassy in there, but apparently there's not. So, a lot of the traps in this area are static. They do not change regardless of playthrough. But there's a trap in here that does. Uh, let me just fix my stuff here. I could be doing with some bandage stuff. Um, so for example, this door has a, a guillotine at the top of it, like the first trap at the start of the, the level. But if this one doesn't go, then there's a door coming up that does it instead. So now we won't get it on the other door because we got it there. So we're basically just walking through this place. Right, so first thing we need to do is pick up this. This is a a testimonial for Jimmy. So this is one of the memories of Jimmy. It meant it quite literally. Or almost literally. We've just been fucking done in by a fan. There's a fight somewhere over here. I want to mark it um, because when you don't mark a fight and you run into it, the game will make you fall on the ground. Which is fine for Eriko because Eriko gets up like immediately. I think I've fucked that. Yep. Yep. So then she just gets up. Uh, another mechanic of this game that took us a while to figure out back in the day is if you press the A button while in a battle, you will sidestep and block any damage, like every single attack will miss, but it does raise your heart rate by like three points, so I'm gonna use it here. It becomes very, very overpowered, but it's a lot easier to do when you're not already dying because you're running into all the traps. So this is the wee inside out man, or a meat man I think people call him. He's a strange one. Pretty gross. It's pretty disgusting. Like I said, we're probably gonna die soon. He was not Jimmy. If we stand over here, a whole bunch of knives just appeared. Fucking gutters. Right, I'm now walking slow because of the. Um... Oh, I missed a newspaper clipping. Fuck. Mass homicide at Chateau Bambolo. Owner Mr. Bambolo mysteriously disappeared. Mercilessly murdered bodies were found at Chateau Bambolo. Burned. All identified as young guests. Mr. Bambolo, the hotel owner, is missing. Details are still under investigation. Mr. Bambolo's diary was found at the site. Hatred directed toward the guests who caused the fire filled the pages. The state police are, ser are searching for their suspect, Mr. Bambolo. I think they're looking for Mr. Bambolo, guys. I could be wrong. Is there anything here? No. So everything is bad right now. I think this is a fight right in front of me. Let's go mark it. Oh, it's an item. Oh, it's an item that stops bleeding. That's amazing. Why am I what? I'm not gonna. I just. I don't want her to die. She's just. She's just gonna. <laughs> really? Is the problem? Well, maybe we might be alright, actually. We seem to be doing alright with the old items at the moment. Uh, this is about to attack me, I think. Yeah. Some planks of wood just come and fucking batter me. 
I'm casually spoiling the story the whole time. Uh, great. So these bottles are gonna fucking attack me. For some reason. We have fainted! Now we need to sit and wait for the faint timer to go. This can happen in a battle. <laughs> bottle job, how you doing, Candy? Right, we need to sort of our um, heart rate because we're gonna die. We're gonna we're gonna swallow without chewing as it may explode this nitroglycerin to relax our heart rate. I don't know about you guys, but if something said to me, swallow without chewing because it might explode, I don't think that would set up my heart rate. Also, by the way, uh, I do not think that fifty beats a sec uh, beats per minute is um, healthy. Um, there's only one trap that I really want to mark properly, and it's the TVs. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear fucking Bambolo growling at me? Being so chill, you die. <laughs> uh, gotta have a steak dinner because I'm in a lot of pain. And I'm about to fight something. Is it? I would have thought it was more than that. I'm just gonna try and avoid this guy as much as- Look at him, he's fucking so slow. He's taunting me, get fucked. I think 50's a bit low. I'm not gonna go in the bathroom because there's a trap that spoils the bad guy. <laughs> in one of the toilets. We'll maybe come back to it at some point. Cool, we got a deep breath. We can now remember to keep breathing. <laughs> ah. Oh, that door just went in fire. I don't know how Banbalo managed to make his house do all this, but, um,. Good going, man. This is like walking around Partick. <laughs> go, Hassie. Nothing special found here. This is the door. If that first door hadn't guillotined us, this door would have done it. Uh, let's pick up a diary. Bambolo's diary. Hotel business is on track. Had intensive batting exercise with Jimmy in the basement again. Batting style seems improved. Chin still goes up and he swings. We'll practice again tomorrow. We'll try a thousand swings. Chin did not go up today. Good job, Jimmy. That's the swing. Minnesota Kids League finals tomorrow. Eat protein-rich food tonight. You'll need a lot of energy. Papa will get up at four tomorrow to make a special drink for you. Do your best, Jimmy. We won the championship. Jimmy hit the winning homer. He is the MVP. Congratulations, Jimmy. I can't help sharing my tears of joy. If only he knew he'd keep Jimmy away from fire. He was allergic to fire. I'll confirm all interests in the restaurant. That's This is the clue to tell you to get the testimonial if you haven't done it already, by the way. Guests may ask, Mr. Bambolo, who's that? Ah, that's Jimmy's. He was chosen MVP in the boys' league. It's a thrill just to think about it. I shall treat the guests with barbecue tonight. Who do you think put, who do you think the home run king is this year? It's Jimmy. Oh, because you endured my hard training. You have done well, Jimmy. Your trophy is magnificent. Let's place it in our bedroom so we can see it every day. Jimmy, keep hitting and fill this chateau with your records and trophies. Let's go, Jimmy. Again, that's a clue that you need to pick up his trophy. Which is in their bedroom, which is funnily enough in the next room. Uh, there's a fight right there. There's his trophy. You hear the wee screeches in the background sometimes. Sometimes, this is like the only level I think that does it, but this level throws in random sound effects to freak you. Like the, like, Bambolo growling. Doesn't happen every time you play it, it only happens sometimes. Oh, Jimmy. 
You are now gone. Papa will treasure your bat. The one you practice with and hit the winning homer with. Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> Got that. Cheers for the bits, guys, by the way. <laughs> Jimmy, it's time for practice. Get out to the training field now! Hey, you're not Jimmy! 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 F in the chat for Jimmy, boys. Now I curse the hateful youngsters holding that bat. Bastards. Why did my beloved Jimmy have to be killed by such imbeciles? Papa will revenge your death. I'll kill all lurking around. I'll do it for you, Jimmy. Your boy's have his fucking tits, man. Right. We're fighting two wee dummy men again. I'm going to try my best to get out of this without taking damage. Not, not happening. There we go. Narrow escape. When your son dies and the best you can call the people responsible is imbeciles. Listen, nobody said that Bambolo was good with his words, right? Look at this fucking room. What do you think he did here? What do you think this is? I, I think it's just because it's like Dreamcast and some things just do not come out properly. Thank you very much. I need this. But it's just really difficult to tell what some of the things are in this game. Right, up we go. Um, I'm about to get battered off of something, but I don't know what yet. Oh, it's the same trap we had earlier. The fucking done it again. Oh, I guess that's also a guillotine door. Oh, shit. Learn something new every day. Is there anything over here that I'm about to pick up? I would have preferred a bandage, but I'll take it. Ooh. Somebody's have a fucking badging in here. Ah! I don't know if these are... I don't think these are traps. I like this theme part will kill people in the government and then I just went, this should be fine. Oh shit, I didn't mean to mark the TV. Fuck. Damn, that's my fault. I thought I wanted to, but it turns out I didn't. Uh, let me out. Oh, that was an arrow escape. Holy shit. <laughs> you nearly fucking got me. Anyway, the reason I'm, 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 I am trying to kind of rush through this level a little bit, because there is a time limit, and if we manage to fuck that time limit, then um, we don't save our pal. So I kind of want to move on. Thanks, uh, Streamlabs, for being, being a real boy. <laughs> Absolutely plugging my shit. Damn, there's like a one of the t the TVs. One of them gives you like a crazy fucking uh, animation for a trap. It like plays a cartoon of a bear getting killed. It's really weird. Like a cartoon bear just having a wee walk, and then an axe fucking appears out of nowhere and kills him. It's so weird and random that I wanted to show it, but. We'll, we'll see another one later though. It's all good. This is actually Dummy Man, by the way. Dummy Man's a cunt. I hate Dummy Man. We get rid of Dummy Man. We don't want to fight him. He's got too much health and he does too much damage for us right now. Um, we are going to have a tough time soon. We've got another hallway. This is the final hallway that we've got to go through. Uh, is there an item here that I'm missing? Yes, a bio body, which is something we can use the now. I could be doing with like an actual item, you know? Something that can actually help us. Can I get some health? I've only got, I've only got hassies. Okay, it'll have to do. Boy, that should that be a res 8? I mean, we've got bits of rose here, Sean. We've got like our arms or something. Right, I've got a feeling that there's uh, another dummy man somewhere. And if he's going to be anywhere, he's going to be at that door. It's either a fight or an item. Oh, it's an item. A discount ticket, brilliant. So, the discount ticket. 
gives you a discount at the emergency room. But oh. any operations that you get or ca or can get, sorry, from the emergency room costs twenty thousand dollars, and the discount ticket brings that down to twelve. But since you start with three grand, you're literally never going to be able to afford it. Now, I specifically marked that lamp because of fights in that lamp. Or the lights, the light bulb, sorry. Also, yep, we just got attacked by a giant face. Oh, it's dummy man again! Whoa! Whoa! Stop it! Fuck, you got me that time. Just get out. Erico, move! Right. We're nearly there. We've actually made it throughout the entire level without dying. That's insane to me. I thought we would have died ages ago. The only problem is I'm gonna have to get rid of the bleeding. Because we're gonna have to be able to run very soon. I'm gonna save the game, but I'm gonna not save over the one we've got here because uh, we're very close to death. And if we die, then I can just go back and start from there again without hitting all the traps. And we'll be in a much better spot. Right here we go. We've made it to the basement where they started, where they were playing, we were practicing their baseball. Oh, Jesus. My boy Jimmy, only Jimmy Studium. Jimmy love home run Jimmy. There's just blood everywhere. Give me back my Jimmy, give me back my Jimmy, give me back my Jimmy, bastards, give me back my Jimmy. Give me back my Jimmy, 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 bastards, my Jimmy. So um yeah, he was he was off the deep end. So slight puzzle. The Russell just Jimmy's fuck off. Uh so obviously there's a bit it looks pretty strange there. We need to put Jimmy's testimonial up there. Awarded to Jimmy when he became an MVP in the Youth League. M memorable item of Banbolo. There you go. We've hung it up. Victory, Jimmy boy. Jimmy, baseball hero. Heavy. Con. Hold on. Heavy. I don't even know what that says. Heavy Condower? I have no idea what that's supposed to say. Anyway. We need to put Jimmy's trophy in this spot. Memorable item of Bambolo awarded when he became home run king in the kids league. Heavy cold collar. Mm. Never were no so sad about Jimmy going after all. So now that we've done that. Home, the home plate, I think, is, uh, is glowing. Mikey, I hope you're still here, pal. Does sound like he said Merry Christmas there, by the way. Just a little bit. So this is a uh, this <laughs> Mr. Blobby took a turn. So this is Bambolo. He is invincible. We cannot kill him. He has a blowtorch. That's his main way of attack. 
he also vomits acid for some reason. Um, he's uh, fucked. He's a monster. He's, he's badly, badly, badly burned and murderous. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to escape the battle or try to. Okay, we're on fire. Things did not go well for us. Right, so we've escaped. And now Ban Molo has just gone. He's disappeared. He's not here anymore. But now... This bit is open. Before this was blocked by like a building or something. We're gonna go through this door, which, I mean, doesn't seem like the best idea. So what's now happening is we've entered a sort of maze in a way. It's not really a maze. Basically, you've got two ways to pick to get to the other end. And uh, if you pick the wrong end, you pick the wrong way, Banbolo's going to be there. But to be honest, he's quite easy to dodge. I say that and I'm going to run right into him, what you see. So we're going to run this way. He's right here. Yep, ran right into him. You can hear... Oh, there's the acid. You can hear his, um, his blowtorch scraping off the ground. It's a nice, a nice little clue that he's around. And I'm also going to show you something else that's in this game. Which I don't know if it's a, a proper bug or something that's just been... It's not really been tuned right. We need to see if we can spot him first. There he is. So, if you go into the map screen... Banbolo will freeze for like two seconds. See him? He's frozen and now he's moving. And then I'll press the map screen again. And he's frozen. And he's moving again. So what I think this is, is they were trying to make it so that he couldn't catch you and like coming out of the map screen. So they like turned him off. They, they like made him stop for like a second but they didn't really test it i don't really know it's a bit of a weird one but we're just going to dodge him as much as we can anyway oh and we found a shower block So he's just dragged our pal, Kevin, who he inexplicably thinks is his son, Jimmy. I guess it's just because he's stricken with grief. We have the speed ladder, which speeds up the ladders that we use to escape. Which is hilarious because we could potentially not even use them in this level now if we manage to dodge him. Hey, what's up? You're right at the end of the first level. We're trying to dodge what boy Banbolo here, who is a deformed, burned man. Sorry so far, Jimmy. Pretty much. You've not missed much. We've just kind of been going through this guy's house after his son, his son was uh, burned to death on a fire. He also got caught in the fire, but he didn't die, and he decided to kill all the people that caused the fire. He's right beside me. Oh, you've maybe just seen a little bit of his leg there. Oh, fuck. There he is again. Teleported in front of me. Ah, he's vomiting all over the helipad. Also, by the way, Erifer, uh, we escape battles in this game by uh, calling up for an escape ladder from a helicopter. Perfectly normal things to do in video games. Honestly. Cool. If we've made it this far, we're golden. Oh, let's save the game. Because we're about to actually fight Banbolo for real this time. This time he ain't going to be invincible. Is this like a new dark remake of Burnt Face Man? Sure. Although I think this was probably first. Kevin? A ghastly system detected. Warning. 
Impending explosion likely with the rise of room temperature. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> right. Now we're just going to beat the shit out of Banvalo. He's very, 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 very easy. Uh, you can just bait him into doing this really long flame attack and then just go behind him and smack fuck at him for a bit. It's actually a remake of Resi 3. Listen to this battle music, by the way. It's so fucking weird. Yes, man, we staggered the bastard. Oh, he's vomiting over there. Oh, fuck. One more hit? Or two more hits? Fuck me, man. I might actually die. There we go. He's fucking deep. Yes, he will spread the death battle. It's a, it's a weird motif he's got going on. Also, now he's on fire again. Still saying, Jimmy. Right, we're really hurt. But we need to save our pal, Kevin. Kevin? Kevin, are you alright? Oh, uh, what the... Erico! Oh, this is the worst place to be right now. Let's get out of here. I'm not kidding. Woohoo, yeah! You're our savior. I'll help you any way I can, you hear me? I don't know why Kevin sounds drunk. Don't ask me. You're crazy. You thought Brock Jock would be Jimmy? No, no, no. We'll get to, we'll get to him later. We'll... <laughs> I don't want to spoil things, but when we get... Big Brock is interesting, let me say that. Right. Erico's moaning because she's really sore. But now we have the Jeff Bezos potion, boys. Do you know what the Jeff Bezos potion does? It heals everything to full. And also, we have a protector. I don't actually know what this does. <laughs> I think what it does is it stops your character falling to the ground if they get surprised by a, like an enemy. Oh no, damage to stamina and bleeding will be reduced by two thirds. Oh. Uh, I don't know why it's giving it to me here. I don't think we keep it. The thing about this game is when you finish a level, you do not keep your items. Um, everything goes away, so we'll lose the bat when we uh, finish this level. Also, get ready for this. Yep, he's giant now. So see if you do not know that you can dodge with using the A button. This is almost impossible. Because he will just smack the shit out of you and you'll die. Because you are, like I said, even if you've got all these healing items on you, you cannot heal right now. So we just need to jump along these logs. I assume they're logs. Just dodge Ban Bobo's shit. Don't ask me why there's a giant Ban Bolo. Don't ask me how he managed to break that, that room and pull it all the way there and then appear somewhere else so it wasn't even him pulling it. Doesn't matter. Don't also ask me how he's somehow like really deep in that water, but when I stand in it, it's up to my ankles. Don't know. Don't get it. This is Ban Bottle Control Room. Can you hear me? This is Control Operator Jackson. I repeat, this is Control Operator Jackson in the control room. Our oil pressure is normal here. Average electric current is 52,000 volts. 
generating capacity of 2,700,000 watts. 10-4, main control room here. Checking database now. Hold on a second. The pressure on the leg is a bit too high. I bet it's the right leg. Last time I checked, it was a bit rusty. That's all right. It's still within control parameters. And what are you planning to do for dinner tonight? I'm starving. I think I'll have fish or something. At this point, meat doesn't sound too appetizing. <laughs> yeah, we got enough meat laying around over here to feed an army of rats. Help! Stop right there. This area is restricted to authorized personnel only. Please, I can't buy that horrid beef myself. I know, isn't that cool? We spent five million dollars to build this enormous thing we call band bottle. It's super alloy skeletons controlled with advanced hydraulics with custom bearings and joints. You're looking at two meters of thick titanium for every bone. All computer controlled by me. <laughs> How'd you like that big sucker, eh? <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and it goes fucking raging. So what are we gonna do, boys? We're beating the shit out of them. <laughs> so, there you go. Operator Jackson is dead. We need to take his ID. You don't know that, but you do. Uh, and then we'll just leave. Uh, if we go in here, we can pick up a, his nice salad that I guess he was going to have for lunch after he finished killing us. Uh, he was also a robot, seemingly. Yeah. Um, say goodbye to Barbalo. Um, he's just chilling. Why don't we just uh, have a casual stroll uh, along the locks? The thing is, Sean, they never come back to that. We never find out. You wonder why the Dreamcast failed? <laughs> Mikey, this was released, like, right at the end of the Dreamcast life. You can't even put this... You can't even blame this on that. You can't put uh, the Dreamcast failing on Elgweed. Banbolo Ban was a lie after all. You all thought you all thought Jimmy was a real person. You believed it. Fabrication. He was a lie. You all fell for it hook, line, and sinker. That's the Truman Show now. I mean, it is a little bit. One thing you do need to remember is it's meant to be a park. You were developing this and it killed it. Go. Here's the goal. But see, if you did not pick up that ID card, you can't beat the level. You have to use it in this. There you go. There, the gate opened. And now leave. There we go. Level one complete, boys. We did it. We, we soothed um, the rage of Bambolo. Doing a little Nicky impression. <laughs> I got no arms, Nicky! There you go, Domni. How you doing? We've just finished the first level. We've lost out on six grand because I did not clear basically any fucking traps. And we're back in the park. But this time, for checking hey, just to follow them, we're gonna buy more items. Uh, I don't think we really need them, to be honest, but we're gonna. We'll just buy a couple of these, a couple of these, and maybe a couple of bandages. We've got loads of money, we're as well just doing it. Just for safety. For the next level, although the next level is incredibly short. We'll save the game. Before we move on. Yes, man. 
You gotta love the Dreamcast. We were just talking about how this killed the Dreamcast, allegedly, according to the people in my chat. And one thing we're gonna do before we move on is I'm gonna upgrade Erico. We're not gonna play as Erico in the next level, but I'm just... We're upgrading her for later. So this is the ER. Basically you have build up, recovery, and return to life. So if any of our characters die, we can come back to return to life to bring them back. Uh, we can, I guess, recover health and whatever in this, but I've actually never used it. I think it's, I think it's BS. <laughs> and uh, build up is just basically increasing stats. So Eriko already has the maximum heart build up, heart operation. It, um, it, um, yeah. Um, it builds up. This is building up stamina, so this is your health, so we'll, we'll maybe increase our health a bit. As you know, we want to increase the bleeding because Eriko's bleeding stat is terrible. Oh. So, guys, what would you say if you were getting surgery by a bunch of crash test dummies? Would you let that happen? Would you be okay with it? Back off, you spook! That's it. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know if you if you meant that when you when you put the bits through. Cheers for the bits. Let's go for level two. Revenge of Queen Worm, starring David Rodriguez with Rachel, Devil Monkey, Michelle Waters, who is our friend. I never forget you, Rachel. Michael Reynolds film. So Michael Reynolds is like the guy who owns the park. He directs all these films that we're going through. Um, maximum prize $20,000. Can't remember if that's accurate. Some of them are wrong because this game gets a lot of things wrong. Let's go for Revenge of Queen Worm. And also note that there are no subtitles in the opening cutscene for this level. And there was for the first one. An RV campsite has been turned into a morbid morgue, covered in blood and the remains of numerous unidentified bodies. It's hard to believe that such a brutal massacre could have happened in this day and age, especially at such a secure location. It only took the rescue crew 20 minutes to respond to the emergency call, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. There were no survivors and consequently no witnesses. So the mystery remains. Who or what could have done this? It seems too massive and malicious for a single human to have done it, or several for that matter. Yeah, I wonder who could have done it. There were dark forces at work here, and no one's talking about it. It happened four days ago, and the place has been dead quiet ever since. Yeah, Sean, you might be onto something there. It might have been the worms. Might have been the queen worm. It's a bit weird that they say it's a pure mystery and who could have done it and blah blah blah, because the fucking level is called worms. Looks like a deadly pure mystery. A little bit, honestly. To the challengers, it is too dangerous to enter alone. The camping site is closed now, but you cannot go back. We hope for a miracle for you to handle the incident and return safe and sound. Yeah, I never, I didn't have the web browser or keyboard and mouse. I think we tried to plug it into a modem back in the day, but we didn't really understand how it worked. So I never really used it online. Ah yes, the outside of the, the cinema said that the win prize was 20,000. It's actually 80. So 30 minutes, zero traps to clear. Interesting. We are gonna play as our new character, Kevin. Let's go. Is this is this a haunted haunted house? No, this is not a house at all. We're out in a camp now. Completely different location. We're at Camp David. Hi pal. He's got a wee newspaper clipping. 
uncontrollable drop in worm prices. It hit another record low today. I didn't realize there was like a price, like a stock price for worms. Worms drew attention as a protein rich alternate to meat. Prices remained low at $16 a kilo when the price declined to $2 today. The market was at its lowest people. They were eating worms. Yes, I think it is, Sean, you're right. Some economists point out that the similarity with the tulip bubble in Holland in the 1630s, investors and farmers are left with serious losses. David Rodriguez, 68, became the king of worms by producing 10 times more worms than the average with the help of his queen worm. I am I am just speechless. It's extremely hard to keep worms. I no longer can afford to feed Rachel. Tell me if you have a better idea other than committing suicide. Prices are expected to decline further. Well, that was a bit of a weird thing to say in the newspaper, um, but... Hey Marco, <laughs> we got a brain, pedo buttons. <laughs> right, let's go over here and we'll pick up our horror monitor for the level. Or not. Hey, my horror monitor! W what's the matter with you? Give it back! A mon killer stole the horror monitor. So we had to do that, uh, otherwise it won't let us leave the, le the this area. It's so weird. Also, speaking of weird, uh, some weird shit's about to happen. The type of shit that I think Mikey's been been waiting for. This is an item sensor. What this does is if you look on the map, it'll tell you where any items are. There's currently none here, so we'll look in the next area for them. We Kev looks like a Yakuza pedestrian. It kind of does, yeah. Mikey. Mikey, I hope you're here, pal. Yeah, look at that. I've never noticed them before, but you're right. Cunt needs an iron. Got a problem, Sean? Does something happen? <laughs> um. Yeah, if you're Eriko, the same thing happens. Uh. Your weak character. Your, this is going to be your new favorite character, I think. Even though you'll not see very much of him because this level is like insanely short. Uh, by the way, I love this sign. Danger, and then like a big worm. You should end me. So, um, this sort of weird spinny thing that's telling me that there's an item over there. I'm probably actually going to patch it. This level doesn't. It's not incredibly interesting in this section. This is like a massive area that you're just meant to like wander about and run into battles. So let me just figure it where I am. I <laughs> waited a danger worm. Idris Elba is Knuckles. What do you mean, like in the in the film? I don't think you like mummy popcorn either, mate. Also, say hello to. The Mon Killers. So Kevin isn't very good with the whole getting back up after getting a fright thing. He just kind of wanders about on his hands and knees for a while and then gets up. Meanwhile, the Mon Killers are hacking. Fuck out of me. Over here. Fucking hell, really? That's a really weird casting choice, I feel like. Also, yeah, who is who is playing Tails? Uh, I should have bought more bandages. I forgot that Kevin took so long getting back up. No, I, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a strange one. It's not what I would have expected. Um, I think I'm actually probably as well. Just use just running. It will build up my bleeding stacks, but I have enough. 
I learned to fall. <laughs> Don't, man. So, you can maybe see the ground shaking. That's because there's a worm chasing me. Oh, fuck. I didn't mean for him to catch up with me. Unless you have a weapon, the worms are almost impossible to kill. They just take so much damage and are so hard to hit. Look how fucking long Kevin takes to get up. Eriko's like the best character just because she does not fucking do that. She gets up like immediately. Uh, so we got some scorpion onion soup and we've got Hasse Recover. More advertisements. Can I just cure this bleeding just now? Because holy shit. I don't want to have to go through this level like fucking a mile a day. So we're heading towards the drive-in cinema theatre. For some reason. Oh here we go, we can get a proper look at the worms now. So the worms can't get onto the roads, so they'll just like do this. You know, I've been tempted to play Eternal Darkness. I never finished it um, when I was playing it, like, myself. I think I got really stuck. I think that's why I stopped. It's been on the list for a while right enough. It's just trying to get it to emulate well so that I can stream it. I do have the, the game, but I don't remember what it is. It may be at Gordy's house, but I could be really wrong. Maybe it's doing the stairs. I have no idea. Why do you look for it? As a kid, you had literally no idea what was going on. Nah, I mean, I was an adult and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But see the way that game, like, uses just wee tricks to scare you? Like, kidding on your telly's turning off and all that? Like... Let's see if you can figure it out. I mean, we could probably stream it. At some point, and we could just try and... I mean, I'll probably just look up a walkthrough if I'm, if I'm really that stuck, you know? Fuck! No, Kevin! Get up! Oh, my heart rate's fucked. Oh shit, I forgot your heart rate goes up if you're fucking crawling about. Fuck, man, Kevin might die. If I'm not careful. You fucking prick. <laughs> so there's no traps in this level, but there's fucking loads of enemies to avoid. Right, cool. We should be back to normal. Just about. Jeez, oh. Right, um, this way. Thank you. Handy, handy sign. Telling me where I am. Things are going to get more mental once we finish this wee section. We're going to fight more mon killers, I think, just now, though. No? Or is it here? Yeah, there it is. Just gonna sit here for a bit. Don't mind me, you guys. Right, okay. No, I said don't mind me. Leave me unminded, you wee pricks. Oh my god. <laughs> Get fucking done in by these wee monkeys. We're already kind of out of items. I bought far too little, but it's alright. It's okay. No, I think we just keep going, don't we? And then go left? Yeah. The weird map trick to stop Bambolo in the last level works here as well. The worms... Basically any enemy that's in the overworld can be stopped by pressing the map button for a few seconds. It's so weird. in front of me. I can to see the screen shaking and I can hear him. Oh, there he is. Nah, I ain't fighting you today, pal. Out my road. Hey. Here we go. We've made it to the drive-in theatre where the bad artist and too late, too tired have been, uh, have been fucking graffitied here for some reason. Welcome to Drive Theatre. Uh, let's be shop. Let's see if we can go in the shop. 
Oh, man, not another drunk worker. I can't even stand looking at you. Get out of here. Don't ever come back. You hear me? So I've missed it. I've missed one of the, the the notes. But basically, there was a company. They promised him that he. They promised this guy that they would help him and blah blah blah. And they did. They, they betrayed him. And he's raging. David, you piece of crap. You always made fun of us, Drant employees. Rachel, that Rachel. <laughs> she was always your favorite. <laughs> Don't know what made him say that. When he was dying, I absolutely do not know what made him say that. Um, what we have to do is jump over here. We have to be careful not to jump in there. Um, I'll show you why soon. This poster. This is of the Banbalo Hotel. We were just in a minute ago. House of the Lightning. Nobody returns. But it also has, right next to it, a baby bottle. And if we were to, uh, if we were to fall or jump onto the ground, we are suddenly in a boss fight with the Queen Worm. It was a Sega, well, a Dreamcast, so kind of. Hi, Kevin. Kevin's the worst, honestly. Kevin, Kevin is a bad type. Right, we've got a baby's bottle. Let's go and um, inexplicably use it at this door. Stained with mud and gas. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it was published by Crazy Games. Wait, that's... I was looking for that. It's my dear Rachel's nursing bottle. Oh, how I miss those days. I'd nurse her with this bottle and she'd look up at me. Oh, I guess you're not from the Drott Corporation. Please, come inside. I have something to tell you. Hey, well, let's, let's, let's go inside. Big picture of David and um walking to us. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Ever since the Drant Corporation cheated me, I've had a hard time trusting anyone. I apologize. By the way, I want to ask you a favor. You seem decent and trustworthy. It's about my beloved Rachel. I wrote the details in my will. It's all right here. Please read it, will ya? Please? Okay, strange talking painting. I'll I'll read your your note. It does it does look like that. I'll hang myself from the water tower tonight. If you read this, I will be around the first block of hell. I have good memories of the worm business. There is just one thing on my mind, Rachel. Without me, what will happen to her? She will sure, surely suffer, surely suffer from hunger. So I would like to ask you a favor. All right, wants us to take care of Rachel. Tell Rachel, so I can be together with Rachel in the next world again. This is the best for us. Now kill her exactly the way I tell you. This fucking note took a turn. Burn her with a flamethrower. No other way, okay? This may sound cruel, but you'll see why soon. I really need you to do this favour. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. <laughs> I know, I, I, I did say earlier that I would be saying the name Rachel. <laughs> and uh, it's because it's in this game. About the flamethrower. I keep the one I was using for weeding in a secret place. I don't want Drant to find it. I am taking the memo that shows the secret place with me. Find it on my body. Well, I'll go ahead and wait for Rachel around the second corner of hell. David Rodriguez. So we need to take this key. We are, can also just absolutely fucking raid his shop. He does not give a fuck, he's dead. So let's pick up some nitroglycerin. Pick up a heart. 
and we'll pick up some hassies alongside the max powers. Cool. Out we go. So we're going to use this key here to open the gate. So we have a, a strange poster for mutant worms. It came from the underground, coming to you. Which is a bit appropriate. Um, people probably would have thought of it, but that was a bit strange. We've got Tommy Hopper, who has directed Massacre in Nature. Man, I'm here, alone. Nominated in the National Award 12 section, don't you know? We also have Cannibal Fantasy, Goblin Moon. It has a Mon Killer on the front. We're also going to have a fight relatively soon with a new enemy that we've not seen yet. Clash Heat, Clash, 4,528 cars, died 35 stuntmans, a lot of dollars wasted, Clash Heat. And um, faceless, faceless women with guns as the the next enemy. Over here. Gonna get Over the fuck here. out of here. Faceless women with guns. We are in a lot of trouble. That done a that done a number on us. Getting shot the fuck up really, really hurt. Now we're gonna have to fucking stroll for the rest of this level. But that's fine, because I'm gonna take my time and look at these signs anyway. Dummy man, it is your turn to be dummy. Eyes wide open. And I don't know what that's supposed to say, because it's really hard to see. There's a trap sitting about here somewhere. I couldn't find it when I was playing the game before. Um, so we might run into it. It looks like a battle though. Godla. I feel like I'm getting closer to it by accident. I think I am. I'm probably gonna run into this fight. There it is. No, anyone but you. <laughs> Nice. Cool. Things are looking bad. Ooh, dodge that. Over here. One oh, nearly get shot. Very, very nearly. Right, that should be the last fight. Tell the boss. Oh well, actually, I'll tell a lie. So David's been dead seemingly for four days. They said this happened four days ago and that's seemingly when um, David died, but uh, he's a skeleton, like, what? I buried it in the ground in front of the movie billboard. You can see the sign through the work hut window. Attack of the monster bee! The movie posters are so fucking weird in this game. Dummy Man 2, The Overdrive. What does that say? It is time to be dummy again. I don't know what the fuck they were on when they made these. <laughs> I know I'm running, I'm going pure slow, but I'm gonna die if I don't, honestly. And then we'll have to start the whole level again, which I guess, like, the level doesn't take very long. Dummy Man 3, The Returner. Does it have a tagline? I don't actually know, I can't read that. Number 
not a mummy and dummy am dummy what a weird one <laughs> right let's go into his wee his wee his wee hut let's read his diary I bought a worm from a vendor so I could raise worms for sale. The vendor brought me his last worm. That worm was you, Rachel. So Rachel is the worm. If you didn't already catch that one. You are more special than any of the other worms I knew. Rachel is the name I wanted to give my daughter. Now go and have lots of babies. Help me make some money. Something terrible happened to Rachel today. It was my fault, but I still don't know what happened. I was playing with her under the tree as usual. I don't know how you play with a worm, right? I don't really want to know. Then somehow she slipped from my hands and fell into a gas tank. As you do. Do you guys not play with your worms and also a gas tank right next to each other? Worm mania. Ah, oh, I did have a bit for that. I fucking forgot to do it, Sean. I picked her up right away. I thought she would die after being soaked in so much gas. I was terrified. Strangely, she started sucking the gas off of her body. She never did weaken. How bizarre that my little girl did such a thing. All I can do now is look after her. It seems Rachel is growing too fast since the gasoline accident. Now all I can do is feed her mu as much gasoline as she desires. Is it? Because no, in this game it's not. She gets bigger and bigger each day and she doesn't look like a worm anymore. It's okay to get big. But her size is beginning to scare me. She is in good shape though. I'm getting worried about her. She outgrew me in 10 days. Her reproduction rate is 10 times higher than any other worm. Her babies are of high quality and they will sell well. Or, and they sell well, sorry. Well, I did get my wish of wealth and happiness. Bring on more worms, Rachel. Oh, son. Rachel? Please burn Rachel, please. That giant worm is Rachel? Please kill Rachel. I bought it, nice. And a big fuck off wrench. We're gonna need that. So there's a there's a there's a cutscene that we've passed by because we went to go to the memo instead. We need to go over here, just the movie billboard, where the flamethrower sits. But unfortunately, we can't use it as a weapon just yet. Small but powerful requires special fuel. Also, I don't want to spend too long in the pause menu because believe it or not, time still goes up when you're at pause. You don't actually pause the game. Well, you pause the game, but you just don't pause the timers. Both supporting the signboard armies. What we're gonna have to do is knock down Dummy Man. Basically just knocking the signs down for a purpose that will become more obvious in a second. I'm just trying to limit this bleeding a wee bit so that I don't have to fucking walk everywhere because we're running out of time. Right, we're fine. We can now run. Man. We are going to run into the guy who tells us to do this, but I, like I say, I need to save some time here. Dummy man. Dummy man. Knock down, dummy man. Ugh. There you go. He's also got an item, I think. Yeah, he's got a newspaper clipping. What does it say? Mysterious catastrophe at campsite. All visitors killed. Site expected to close. Bodies of camp goers and destroyed cars found at Camp David in Arizona. Cause of the incident is still unknown. Local authorities rule out human intervention due to the scale of the incident. Slow progress by investigators caused by lack of evidence. Camp David was once a worm farm owned by David Rodriguez. Dron acquired the land and built Camp David. Camp David opened on the 20th of last month, featuring wild monkeys and a drive-in theatre. One of the notes that we've missed, uh, David says that uh, all the monkeys are dead. Um, whatever drawn done killed all the monkeys. We do not have a heck of a lot of time here. Just going to quickly move on. 
once you hit a certain point, the, the our friend Michelle uh, will die. Um, so we need to hurry up and finish this before that happens. So we need to do a platforming section. We knocked down all those dummy man signs so that we could get onto different cars. If we make, if we fall once, we're in a battle with Rachel. So we do not want to fall, especially as Kevin. Gonna sit here for a bit. Oh, just let Kevin get up. And if you, I'm coming for you, baby. <laughs> and if you fail, like we just did there, we need to start from the beginning. So, we want to try and fail the least amount possible, because we do not have very long. No, Kevin, I'm turning left, not right. The controls in this game are a little jank, believe it or not. like pure concentration of trying not to fucking fall. Right, we're nearly there, we're very nearly there. Right, there we go. Now we just need to interact with this, with the flamethrower, because there's a special type of gas. God, we have minutes to do this. So now we're going to be in an actual battle with Rachel, but this time... Oh wow, fucking hell. This time we've got a flamethrower. So we can actually do damage to her, if we could hit her. She's really aggressive, holy shit. A wee bit on her. Jesus. Come on. Oh my god. Where is Banballing? Well, we're Banballing right now, I think. With our flamethrower. Fucking hell. Sit still, hen. See, so you're just trying to waste as much fucking time as possible, man. There we go, there we go. We've got a cutscene to watch after this as well, hen. Fuck. I think Michelle might be dead. I think we might have fucked her, but it's alright. We can we can get her back later. Oh. Is she dead? Is she dead? I think that's her dead. She's now just gonna rise up and die. There we go. Get ready for a fucking mad cutscene, boys. Here to be okay. Oh, that's a relief. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. Hey, you, young one. Thank you. I'll never forget your kindness. Yep. Let's go back to hell. And also, the worm cried like a like a human baby. Uh, what's our time? Oh, <laughs> hold on, we've got fucking 30 seconds to get here, hold on. So over here, we I purposefully avoided this area because this is where Michelle is, but I wanted to wait until we got the flamethrower because it makes this a lot easier to deal with. Oh shit, 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 it's, this. it's not the wee door. Michelle! Dirty bastards. Oh my god. Oh. You do get another weapon in this level, the lead pipe, but it sucks. Yeah! Thank you. 
If you hadn't have shown up, God knows what that slimy monkey would have done to me. So that was you I heard calling for help. You caught my telepathic message. Great. Let's go. We're almost at the goal. That's right. Michelle's telepathic. There we go. Cool. We can now go and end this level. I just need to get one more thing from the, the place where we uh, fought Rachel because uh, we need it to finish the level. There we go, got some gas. Because there's actually a car, David's car I reckon, sitting at the petrol station. We need to fill it up with gas and get the fuck out of here. And yes, you can do it without getting Michelle, and she will just die. <laughs> I 27 litre of petrol, mate. It's heavy as fuck. I think I'm at the wrong side of the car. No, I'm good. There we go. That's it. Level 2 is now complete. <laughs> That's some fucking jerry can. Get it, boys. We get through it together. I lost a wee bit of money because of the time and the bleeding, but that's fine. We still got quite a lot of money. Uh, we're Kevin now instead of Erico because that's how we play this. It doesn't let you choose who you go about the park as. We're gonna buy. We're gonna buy a ton of items here. I'm gonna buy a few steak dinners. Four of these. In fact, I wanna buy loads of this kind of stuff. Based on how things have been in the past couple of levels, I actually really want a lot of healing stuff. You could buy a house in today's market. Listen, I can't get out of here yet. And if I get out of here, I'm gonna win a hundred million dollars. It's an investment. So, we're going to play as Michelle for the next level. Michelle's health, her rate of bleeding, her, her heart rate thing, they're trash. They're all terrible. The only good trait she has is that she has lots of adrenaline, which is something that we're not using because we want to see a lot of traps. So that'll be fun. Uh, we'll see how far we get into level three. Level three is uh, a lot, a bit longer than the last one we did. Wood puppets cut in pieces. It's still warm. Starring George McLaughlin with Woodcutter. Wood Pakua. I don't know what the fuck that's about. And Randy Fairbanks, which is spelled wrong actually, which is weird. Wooden, wooden puppets, mate. So take take note of how it's spelled. It's spelled wood puppets. Single P double P. How about double P double P? Wood puppets. There's so many fucking things in this. You don't need to sell any wooden puppets. I want you to listen quite carefully to the opening cutscene. George McLaughlin knew there was more to life than running a sawmill. He loved what he did, but he needed better equipment. He'd make the finest, fastest chainsaw man has ever seen. That chainsaw instantly would tear through wood with a nice clean cut and would make him the envy of anyone in the lumber business. He knew just the tree to cut to prove the merits of his product. It was 800 years old, huge, gnarly, and tough as nails. He took a picture of himself in front of the tree and then started to saw. Suddenly a face appeared on the tree and it swallowed him. He was well, lost him. in a wilderness or eaten by a bear. No one cared because he was a loner anyway. New workers took over the mill and everything went smoothly until seven years later, 
when a hundred workers mysteriously disappeared. The relatives of the missing workers soon began receiving wooden boxes. The moment they opened them, a maniacal wooden doll jumped out and chased the terrified families. They used pans, sticks, or hammers to smash the dolls as best they could. Ironically, those wooden dolls spewed blood, and this freaked the people out even more. They called them wood puppets and hoped they had seen the last of them. So a big tree grew a face and ate a man, and now people are receiving wood puppets in the mail that's, that bleed when they hurt them. To the challengers, break into the McLaughlin lumber mill and solve the enigma of the wood puppets. Also, prove what happened in the disappearance of McLaughlin. We do n none of this. By the way, I mean, I guess we we we're gonna solve the enigma of the wood puppets, but we're not gonna prove what happened to McLaughlin. Hundred twenty k, easy. Um, we're gonna play as Michelle, and it's gonna be really bad. We're, it's gonna be really bad. Just looking, yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. First thing we're going to do is go over here and grab the horror monitor. And Michelle can see something wrong with the truck in front of us. No, she can't. There's something else. This one? Yeah. It just fucking destroys us. Look how much damage that did. That's the first trap, man. You ever be smacked by a tornado? I knew there was a fight somewhere, but I didn't know where. Michelle's probably dead because she'll not get up for ages. Some strong sand. We're probably not going to play this level as Michelle, if I'm honest with you. She's probably dead, like now. Yeah. So there we go. Our first death. Strength empty. Dead. Cool. We can get Michelle back. So it's not an awful. Uh -huh. It's not terrible, to be honest. Right. So the whole level's reset. Gonna skip past all of that. Let's just keep going. I think this is a fight though. Or there's a fight nearby that maybe I'm just gonna run by, actually. I think that alright. Let's just keep going. We'll probably run into a trap soon. No? Cool. Well, like I said, we're not gonna break into the mill. We're literally just gonna walk through the front door. And now we're in the McLaughlin Museum. Where there's just loads of saws. Eriko's already like, this looks fucking dodgy. And it is? Because chainsaws will just fuck you up. And arms with swords will come out of the paintings and also just fuck your day up. If you had a museum, is this what you would have in it? Homicidal paintings? Uh, is there an item over here? There we go. Got it. 
Right, we now have two models, one of McLaughlin and one of um, a strange lumberjackman. Let's go and speak to, let's go look at the George one first. Hello, my name is George McLaughlin. I came to this beautiful forest seven years ago as a woodcutter. That's really all I knew how to do. Why does it bleed? It's a statue. Isn't it? Is it not? Wait. So this we know we've just gotten from the statue or model says it looks like a, a lumber mill invoice 3221 pieces of two by four were purchased at three dollars each believe it or not that's a clue to a puzzle that we'll see later on in the level now let's go see what the lumberjackman says who who going to cut the tree going to cut the tree and i got to cut the tree because i love to cut the tree yo ho ho and i'm out of control i'm gonna cut the tree what? Why is he singing? What is he singing? We're gonna take his axe. Because that's gonna be our weapon for the level. Um, I'm gonna have a quick heal. Because we're about to run into Surprise, loads of traps. Hey, Mick, how are you doing, son? How are you doing? Can you get a shout out for Mick? How was your stream, mate? Hope it went well. You've caught me just as we're playing the third level of survival horror game, Illbleed. Basically, we're going through different stories. Um, there are traps on every level, and we are running into every single one of them that I can... that I'm running into just throughout the level. Um, just so we can show them off. It's no fun if I'm just blasting through the game, not letting you see any of the mad shit that happens. So here we go, here's a box. Uh, a corpse fell out of it, and it gave us a fright. Um, some blood. A face comes out of it, and it gives us a fright. Whoa. Oh, I mean, you fucked it, Mikey, but it's all right. Thong man's got it for you. There's some chainsaws coming out the wall. That hurts. You're not a fan of that face. <laughs> It's really trippy. Uh, we just got done with a level where um, the, fight, the the boss of it was a massive worm who died and its owner then uh, the ghost of its owner then appeared after the worm had done a baby cry and said let's go back to hell. <laughs> blood face. No I, I assumed the blood face. The blood face is, uh, is a bit strange. You might see another face here. I don't know if this trap happens here or later on. Ah. Oh, no, it's not a trap I was thinking of. Big frighten. <laughs> I know, right? What's next? Oops, some spikes coming up the wall to stab us. Cool. So, I think the game's not very good at explaining what's happening, right? But in the title it says that it's a... Uh... Oh. The title, in the title, uh, it says that it's a virtual horror park, so seemingly these things are virtual? It's so weird. Because if you die in the game, you die for real. So, um, so I should probably clarify. So this is the North American version of this game, which I don't own, but I do own a Japanese copy of it. Because this game was not released in the UK or Europe, it was only released in Japan and America. Just going slow because I should probably explain as well, we have two health bars on the bottom. The green one is my actual health. The red one is my bleeding, which is going down steadily because I'm standing still. If it's high enough and I start running, it will rise, so you need to be careful with that. And there's also the heart rate on the bottom right. Which, if it's too low, or it's too high, will also kill us. I'm gonna mark this. What you're meant to do is mark all these traps so that they don't hurt you. But I'm wandering into them all so that we can see all the animations. But, for 
actual enemies for, for enemy fights, we should mark because then we don't get a fright, we don't fall to the ground, we don't raise our heart rate. So I'm going to run into this and we're going to get in a fight. So this is a wood puppet. This is like the namesake of the level. The level is called Wood Puppets. The story of this level... Just stick with me here. Because it is a bit out there, right? You've only just missed the cutscene where it explained kind of what's going on. There was a man named George McLaughlin who was a lumberjack and he was testing out his his chainsaw. He was... He loved his new chainsaw and he wanted to test it out so he found the biggest, oldest tree he could find and he started trying to cut it. But it grew a face and it ate him. It ate him whole. And uh, then for some reason, people started receiving these boxes in the mail with these wood puppets inside them. And when they would uh, attack them, because they would attack them, they would bleed. Yeah, yeah, Crash was already in it saying it, mate. What was he? Crash said it was Idris Elba. That all makes sense so far. Good. Now, Randy is one of our friends. The game starts with three of our friends coming to the park. So Frankie, hey Frankie! Oh, I'm in the middle of explaining this game to more people. How are you doing, Frankie? How was your stream? It's good to see you all. Um, we're just about half cutscene, so I'm going to try and explain again what's going on. This is a survival horror game where um, some mad shit happens. Basically, the story of this level is a lumberjack named George. He had a big chainsaw, he wanted to test his chainsaw on a really big tree. An old, massive tree, and it grew a fucking face, and it ate him whole. It just swallowed him up, and uh, now people started receiving these boxes with these boys on them, uh, who tried to murder everybody, um, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. We're about to get a cutscene where we're going to see uh, one of them roll around. This is so goofy. It really is. Uh, have you played Elbleed before, Frankie? It's gonna get worse. Um, we're about to get a, a kind of jump scary one, by the way, in a second, just in case that's uh, a bit much for you. I know that like, the whole game is based on jump scares, but like, or like shite jump scares, but there's gonna be one that's, that might catch you off guard. Big tree with a face. You have played it. It's one of my favourite games because it's so weird. I love it. So there's the emergency room. We're gonna actually. We could probably. We probably spend some money here upgrading Erico. Uh, yeah. Um. That's fine. I don't really want to upgrade adrenaline. We're not using it. You need ad adrenaline. Typically, is used up when you use the horror monitor, but we're not really using the horror monitor. Oh, hi, thanks for checking which is a whole in. Other still thing, a piece of garbage. Explained. Cheers for the follow, scaly skeletons. How you doing? So there's a whole bunch of traps like that big tree one we just saw. We could mark that, and we could have just not seen it um, if I was playing the game correctly by using this nifty oh. little tool here and marking it but we're completely ignoring that it exists, for the most part. Well, yeah, no, you'll bother, Frankie. You you enjoy. I keep thinking a haircut's a bald spot. I think sometimes it used to glitch on emulators, but it seems fine now. It does pure seem like a bit of a bald spot, doesn't it, though? Rather than like a clip. Just when you catch it sometimes. Uh, let's see. There's quite a lot of save points in this game. Uh, this game. This level. We're just gonna... Use this one real quick. Right, let's move on. Pick up some items over here. We'll get an artificial plasma. Can't remember what that does. Ooh, this is full of body bags and blood. Lovely. 
Great assess. Oh, it's a hole on the floor. That's an original one. We've not seen that today. I'm joking, we have absolutely seen that. It was the second trap of the game. Right? D2 so there's. Line. Confirming defrost. Turbo in full gear. Number 106 entering skinning stage. Always oh, being skinned. So we're about to see him being skinned or like the after of that. So if you don't want to see a skinned okay. person, don't look now. Has been skinned. There we go. Let's move on. Okay, my heart rate is high. I should probably deal with that. There we go. So, you might have noticed in that cutscene that there's a wee sleepy lumberjack up here. We actually want to get something off of him. You don't know that. Just go with this really well. So, the story of Eriko, the character we're playing, yeah, no bother, Crash. We get this piece of wood. The story is that she has been, um, she was raised in a horror caravan where her dad would travel, her and her dad would travel around the country scaring people with it, and he tested all of her tra his traps on her, so she's not scared of anything, really. Also, he's raging that we took his piece of wood, so now he's going to attack us, but we have our own axe, so we're just going to chop him. We're going to ask him a few questions, is what we're going to do. And exploit that. So there's a button you can press on this. I said earlier, oh, he's done a wee spin and he's fell down. If you press the A button, you can do like a, a dodge, which makes you invincible to all damage, but raises your heart rate. You also can't do it in mid-animation, so you need to sort of be careful with when you're going to try and use it. Listen, his wood was just sitting there, right? What do you want me to do? Not take his wood? It's questionable parenting at the time, but it really paid off in the long run. Oh, another hole in the floor. Great. I mean, how often do you get to go to a horror theme park that will actually kill you if you're not careful, you know? No, what is that? Nitroglycerin, by the way, is an item that says swallow without chewing because it might explode and what it does is it, it perfects your heart rate you've cast this to the tv and the dog is pure fascinated they wanna so, so right now we're seeing what's happening with the people that are dying in this place they're being skinned and then they're being put into this machine that we're about to see who takes multiple salads into a horror walk thing? Me. That's who. We must become wood people. You're absolutely correct, Tails. That is exactly what is happening. The Stop. There you go. They're now covered in wood. They have now a wood puppet. I said that well from when I died. <laughs> Turn me into a wood puppet. Don't explain anything else though, just say that. Just hope that they understand. Right, there's a whole bunch of traps here. Like some fire. Yeah, this is there. There's some blood on the wall that turns into a... I guess part of the tree. And some poison gas. Then I said I wanted to be a tree when I died. This isn't what I meant. <laughs> I took it literally. Uh, something as well I, I mentioned earlier in the stream. But obviously, you guys are, are new in here. So this is the NA version of this game, where this item is a steak dinner. But in the Japanese version, which I'm more used to. Um, it's a different icon. It's like a platter with a granny in front of it, like a grandmother. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> We're just taking a granny ways. Uh, there's a few things in here. I want to mark. I think I want to mark that, mostly. Yeah, there we go. Ah! 
<laughs> cool. That's fine. So, one thing that I think you haven't seen is this helipad in the middle of the floor. Uh, that is how we escape battles. So there is a helicopter above us, and if we stand under it and spam B, we will lower this rescue ladder, and the helicopter will take us out of the battle. Does that make sense? You, you still following me? There's a helicopter above us in this sawmill, yeah? That's just... Yeah? All good? So this is Randy's brain. Like I said, our pal is Randy. He was that uh, wood puppet we saw earlier on. Brain taken from Randy Fairbank's head, a friend of Erico's. So when we rescue Randy, we will give him his brain. But you can give... You can rescue Randy without picking up his brain. And, uh... When you do, the game changes. Because then you can play as Randy without a brain. So, here's what the piece of wood was for. We are going to inexplicably put it in this keypad, which powers it for some reason. And then for the keypad, we're going to refer back to this note we got earlier on that just says wood. It looks like a lumber mill invoice. Three two two one pieces of two by four were purchased at three dollars each. It's not a very difficult puzzle. Literally, all you do is you multiply three two two one by three, which is nine six six two. No. 9663. I, I do that every time. I don't know why. I'm a bit of a fucking idiot. 9663, enter. There you go. Listen up, my wood cutting slaves. You'd better be careful when you start tossing those humans in here. It's easy to slip. And then, wham, you'll be a wood puppet too. I don't think you'd like that now. I don't know who he's talking to. I don't know who his, who his workers are that are putting, turning these people into wood puppets. But anyway, you would think that we actually don't want to be a wood puppet, but uh, as it turns out, we absolutely want to be a wood puppet. You saw the early days. <laughs> so here we are, a wood puppet. E posing, asserting our dominance. Bit into the wood puppet bin. There's just loads of wood puppets. So, as a wood puppet, we can no longer jump. Um, and that's really it. We kind of move a bit more awkwardly as well. Uh, we're going to hit a couple of traps here, like this. Somebody needs to get somebody to fix that because that's just not fucking on. Shoddy workmanship, to be honest. Fucking cowboy rigged that like. And I'm walking because when I run right now, it intensifies the bleeding. Whereas if I walk, it brings it back down again. Electricity shouldn't hurt wood, surely? You would think so. But to be fair, if someone hits us, we bleed because we're technically still human. It's really weird. Also, I just I just realised I've not explained this whole fucking UI thing at the top of the screen. Apologies. Basically, Eriko can smell something funky. She thinks that something's wrong. What you're supposed to do is when you see something like that, you're supposed to bring out the horror monitor and you're supposed to look at it and go, yeah, that looks like it's probably going to be a trap. And then you mark it, you walk into it, and Eriko just doesn't give a fuck and it's fine. But I'm not doing that. We're seeing all these traps. So some of the traps in this game, well, a lot of the traps in this game, to be honest, are static, but a lot of them are random. These ones are random. So because that one was there, it's probably not going to be most of these later ones. 
So there's two of that, you know, there's two of those traps, and then there's also this around some of the corners, where a big fireball just fucking comes out of nowhere and kills you. Most of this place looks like it smells bad, you're right, to be honest. It's probably not great. But for some reason, Eriko can just like pick it out. She's just like, ugh. Um, I, I, can, I can only smell this wee pipe that smells like it's got to have a blade in it, you know? I think there's no more traps in this bit now. I think we just hit them all. Yeah, there we go. Let's go through the door. Uh, I think over here is a dead end. Yeah, I need to go left. Right, here we go, boys. Woodman hunting. In here. <laughs> Erico's got a keen sense of smell, right? Even as a wood puppet. Let's go. To, let's go uh, over here. Let's grab the Woodman Hunting Guide. You forgot how technically advanced the Dreamcast was. See, beyond like for its time, it was fine. But then, like obviously, PS2 and that came out, and it just trounced it. Unfortunately, official wood puppet hunting guide for woodcutters. <laughs> <laughs> Must be weird to sell tickets to identical siblings. See on the other one for the wood puppets. It's another one of those guys. So he, we, he, we see, right? Just wait, easy. And the hunting. The objective is to hunt down wandering wood puppets. Prizes will be awarded. Participants should read the guide carefully. Basic rules. A point is added after beating a wood puppet. A prize is given based on points. Player is disqualified if beaten by a wood puppet. Score differs depending on the types of wood puppets you hunt. For types and points, please refer to the following page. Type A gives the most points. Type A, human inside, speaks and runs away if chased, 30 points. Type B, stares without speaking, simple attacks, 10 points. Type C, brainless, speaks gibberish, behaves oddly, to 2 points. Randy is a type C, we are a type A. Prizes, 30, 300 points, gold chainsaw, special edition by McLaughlin. 200 points is 3 kilograms of prime beef and 100 points gets your mandragora. Defeated wood puppets will be dedicated to the Michael Clinic for anatomy purposes. Okay. Let's go speak to the man. I see you're Erico Christie and you're 18 years old. From this point on is a hunting area. There are a lot of woodcutters who'd love to axe you wood puppets into little pieces. If you manage to make it through the hunting area alive, you'll turn back into a human again. Remember, as wood puppets, you can't jump. Here's a list of people taking part in today's adventure. <laughs> These love friends will go to hell and back <laughs> with you, so stick together. Take the list with you if you want. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Get going! The hunting's already begun. I love Eriko looking like, Fuck, I'm a wood puppet! What happened? When did this happen? Entrance list. Guide for wood puppets. Basic rules. If you defeat a woodcutter and reach the goal alive, you will have a chance to return to human form. If beaten, you will be disqualified. Listen in the appendix of this guide or the wood puppets already registered for today's hunting. Good luck to you all. Appendix. List of participants. Richard Anata Anatasio, age 40, male, salaried worker. Type A. I will reach the goal and return to human, no matter what. Eleanor Ferenz, type, uh, age 38, female, housewife. Type A. I'm dying, help me. Randy Fairbanks, age 16, male, high school student. Type C. Whole bunch of symbols. Dosko Takagi, age 26, male, designer. Type B, any prize for wood puppets? Note, no prize for wood puppets. Type Bs aren't supposed to speak, as far as I'm aware. Um, that's what that we uh, that, that woodcutter manual said anyway. Um, so let's go. We're now going to go through the woodcutter or wood puppet hunting 
section of the level. Now I'm kind of just going to boost through it because I know the route, but basically we're going to get chased by a bunch of woodcutters. Now the last time I played this, I got through this first section without getting a single one. But I don't think I'll be that lucky, I don't think that's ever happened to me before. So basically we're going to run. I hear one. I think. Yeah, there's one to my right, I think. Yeah, there he is, you see him? So if I press the map button, he'll stop. And then he'll go again. Uh, press it again. And he'll stop. And then he'll go again. That's a. Uh, it's used by speedrunners. That trick. Uh, we just went by him. However, he is much faster than us, so he will catch up. There you go. And now I can show off what we can do as a wood puppet because we actually have special attacks. As a wood puppet. We have a kick. It's very fucking overpowered, to be honest. And we also have this move, the helicopter move. The world record for this game, Mikey, is I think an hour 38 minutes or something like that. It's like an hour and a half. It involves knowing... Um... So like I said, like a lot of the traps are random. It's about knowing which cycle you're on. You need to know like if you hit this trap or this trap isn't there, you need to know where that trap's going to be. But like for every level. So it's... There's a bit of, of learning to do for it. I think that hour and a half time's pretty solid as well. I'm gonna get one around this corner. No, there's one right behind me though. I can hear him. We might be able to outrun him because at some point I think they do despawn in this place. Anymore. So here's a big tree. A big withered root is blocking the stairs. So it's a bit of a puzzle. If you don't know, it could possibly take you a while to get through this, especially since you're getting chased the whole time. So there's Randy going off his nut. <laughs> No mix checking out the fucking woodcutter's arse. This is suddenly a horny stream for woodcutters. So we're gonna go over here and... This doesn't really make much sense to me because we're gonna pick up Woodola. And if we go into the, uh, the item list and have a look at it. Wood eating bug. Vor voracious appetite for withered trees. We are made of wood right now. Why are th why how why, how can we hold the bugs? If we're looking respectfully, it's fine. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So we're gonna go and feed the bugs this tree so that we can get the fuck out. It's for science. <laughs> but you you know what? You guys go for it. I've never I've never thought of them that way. I didn't think anyone would, but go for your life. Wadola. Oh, they've made short work of that. The weird fucking JPEG with about three frames of animation. Right, let's go. So thankfully, none of the, as far as I'm aware anyway, the woodcutters can't get up here. And what we'll do is we'll probably see one down down, the, down that floor. Yep, there's one. You can see Eriko's head sort of looking at him. They're hard working men. They, <laughs> they take care of themselves and eat the bus. I mean, fair enough. But they are trying to kill me. They would love to axe me and my little friends into tiny pieces, so, you know. I'm, I'm not the pals. They're not my pals. So, we're now in like a safe spot. Uh, we got a few items we can pick up in here. And also a save point. Steak dinner, nice. You know, for that one reason. Alright, okay. 
<laughs> That's that the only reason? Because <laughs> they're actively trying to kill me? Right, let's move on. We've still got more chases to do. Actually quite near the end of this level which is quite good. I'll probably stop after this level and then we can probably do the next two levels on a different stream and then there's one more level after that and then a bunch of like bosses. Let's kill this guy. Also you cannot escape these, ba these battles, you have to fight them. There's no helipad to save us. Honestly, I would play this whole fucking game as a wood puppet if I could. The attacks are way better than any weapon you get in this game. Let's move on. There's probably one behind me, or is he gonna come in this corner? No, he's behind me, I can hear him. He's coming! He's coming! Oh, I think he's speed up there. Okay! If you go left, you'll continue on with the- Oh fuck, he's there! <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I'm gonna try and avoid him though, because we're just about to hit cutscene. Because if you go to the right, we'll find our good old pal Randy, who is not having a great time. What, you got a problem? Aha! Fucking... Oh shit! I don't know how to pull off that attack. I think it's up in the right trigger. Yeah, it's fucking hell. I've never, I've never done that before. <laughs> I thought you only had two attacks as a wood puppet. I'm learning things every day playing this game. You dead? Okay, he's dead. Cool. Crash test dummies in wood bed have a long standing crutch. <laughs> Eric will use Randy's brain. And like I said, you can rescue Randy without his brain. We'll maybe do that on a stream later on. Phew. I'm sad. I couldn't recognize anything because I had no brain. Calm down, Randy. Everything's gonna be fine. You'll see. Whoa, you're Erica? You came here just in time. I'm sick and tired of looking like this. Let's get out of here. There you go, boys. We saved Brock from Pokemon. Let's, let's fucking heal myself here. I'm gonna take this nitroglycerin because I'm, my heart rate's a bit too high, I think. So we're not finished with the woodcutter section yet. We've still got more to do. The music has turned tense again. Am I going left or right? Left. Got you. Eat him, he's coming. There he is. Just fucking kick him to death. You can pure easily stun lock them too, as a as a wood puppet. Like they're barely a threat. It's ridiculous. Fuck. Where am I going? Cool. Let me turn around. The game sometimes turns you around when you get, get in fights and it's super fucking disorientating. I'm going to try and dodge this guy as much as I can by using this map glitch. Just because we're right at the end of this section. There we go. Woodman hunting gold. Sorted. So we're now in the locker room. 
where um, there's uh, some really angry woodcutters slash elephants. I don't know what that sound effect's meant to be. Just kick it the fucking death. Cool. Barely sure this one's a bad one, but I might be wrong. Nope, nothing special for it. Nice. This one then. It's gotta be. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Just kick him to fucking death. Keep going. Hold on. Can we get a view of his arse? Come here. There you go. Oh, he's even got wee handprints on his arse. He's been wiping it. Wiping his hands off his arse cheeks, man. Like I say, I've never I've never noticed. Because I, 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 I can't even say I've looked at their arses. That's a weird detail. <laughs> oh, fuck. Nice. Let's keep going. Oh. Ah, we changed it this time. There was a hole in the floor with spikes in it. Creative. Oh, we've got a full heal for the old bleeding, so we're still good. Uh, is this a trap? Probably. It was me giving the pot a wee slap. Why are your hands so dirty? What have you been up to? <laughs> Oh my god. Need to kill the helicopter go. Cool. I keep saying cool every time I finish a fight. I don't mean to do it to like imitate Eriko, but it just so just happens that way. Uh, I'm just gonna walk down here because there's no need to rush. Don't need to rush, it's fine. We've already saved the pal, so he's not gonna die now. Right. As a person made of wood. I do not think it would be a good idea to walk in there. It's also covered in blood. But... That's actually what you have to do. It looks comfy. It looks like a torture device, man. It looks like an Iron Maiden. Just stand in it. Get electrified. It hurt us before, with the light, with the fucking dodgy light fixtures in that corridor, but see now? We're just human, we're fine. We go better. Right, now I seem to have a weird... Welcome back, Domini. We're just about to finish this level. Um, and then we're probably going to stop um, to save the level, like the next levels for another stream. Right. Can I pick anything up here now? Now I've got a weird like Mandela effect thing because I remember there being more fights. Oh, maybe there is. There wasn't when I when I played this again. No. No, there's not. It's just that. Cool. Right, we're gonna see. The boss of the level? Oh yeah, Servina. Are we like in a tree or something? 
Oh. Could be the connection. I mean the cable connection, not the oil pump. No, that's not the problem. Sorry, uh, we're having trouble getting the boss character out. Uh, hold on a second, please. Hey, we got another customer waiting here. Hurry up. Try turning on the switch again. Okay, here goes. Nah, nothing doing. This is gonna be a nightmare. Y you over there, uh, go ahead and jump into it and keep going. I'll try to get it to work from here. Yep. Big tree with a big face. Uh, so, if you do not know about the dodge mechanic, this fight is so difficult, it's unreal. However, see if you just sit in this corner, hit twice, wait for his attack, dodge, and then just time it right, don't be an idiot. This fight is ridiculously easy. Do this. Dodge. It's, if you don't know how to cheese it, it's such a difficult boss. <laughs> See, the, it's weird because like there, it's not, this isn't the first time that um, it's broken the fourth wall in terms of it being a park. It happens at the end of the first level as well. But it's just really weird that they do it. This is like the Crash Bandicoot tiger, the tiny tiger cheese. Yeah, kind of. Oh. Fucking oh, man. Right, need to just let him hit. No, actually hit though, don't just fake me out. There we go. My name is George McLaughlin. I can put for him. So, I think what's meant to happen is he's meant to say that before you fight him, but obviously technical difficulties have made that kind of impossible. Which is really weird because it's really weird that he just says that at the end of the fight. Um, just gonna heal myself up a bit so that we get the max amount of money we can. We've got three minutes to beat the level before we get any kind of time penalty. But this is the end of the level. We literally just have to to run to the end of this this creepy forest where the creepy music plays. I got under that apparently. How does a show up on the map actually? Oh, just loads of trees. And that's it. That's the third level complete. So we actually have one of our friends is dead. We lost her at the start of this level because she takes too much damage. We will revive her, but probably not right now. Probably after the next level. Because we, I don't think we've got the money for it. Although, actually, let's have a look. Let's see if we can revive old Michelle. Just had a, a hard, a hard time of it. Unfortunately, return to life. Want a resuscitating operation? Yes. Michelle. Seventy-five grand. Okay. Seventy-five grand's fine. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, no, one hundred and fifteen k is pretty good. That doesn't look like Michelle. 
Why have they got a big fucking saw from, like a drill from a fucking good and lagging? What the hell? <laughs> Excuse me? It's not right. Right, we're gonna buy some items. We're gonna save the game. And next time we will take on the fourth level, which is an interesting level, honestly. Um, by interesting, I mean weird as fuck. Let's just buy some of this shit. Buy some of this. We're gonna be taking a lot of damage in the next level, so I want to make sure we're prepared for it. Take some of these bandages as well. Sometimes I could just do a wee bandage, you know. This is absolutely breaking the game, but like, because of the way I'm playing it, I oh, kind of just need to survive. In. I'm still hey, cheers for the followers. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. I hope you stick around to watch more of the Elbleed adventures when uh, when I get to them. I will be advertising it on my Twitter, because uh, I've been trying to hype this, because I've been looking forward to it. Oh, game is saved. Brilliant. Uh, let me just mute the game. Put some put some music on, and then we'll figure out who we can raid, guys. Uh, taking suggestions in the chat. Well, I'm glad that you guys joined the stream. Thank you very much for the raid, Mick. And I know Frankie's gone, but I want to thank him as well. Uh, very much appreciated. Even Bradbury. <laughs> Cheers, Edifer. I didn't expect to get raids for it because it's a really, it's a really niche thing. But I'm very good, very glad you guys joined. In fact, I know exactly who we're raiding. I'm not taking suggestions anymore, pal. Sorry. A lie tease. We're gonna raid Dan the Ghostman, who is he started a Dark Souls 2 run, where the chat can pick what happens using channel points. You can use channel points to make him pick a weapon or something. I can't remember what exactly. He posted it on his Twitter. But that's who we're going to raid. So hope you stick around. Dan's fucking great. Um, hope he enjoys Dark Souls 2 stream. Um, I will see you guys next time. Hopefully for more outbleeds. But I'll be back on tomorrow for something different. See you after.